Hi, uh, my name is Joseph Yeaman, and I'm the guy who uh, created uh, MAGFest. I did, I organized it, you know, I conceived the idea and organized the first year of the show. It took about a year and a half to put it all together the first time. That was 2001 and 2002. Uh, and the purpose of this video uh, is for uh, Paul Good and Brendan Becker. Um, the other day, uh, Paul tagged me on a Facebook thread about some of the uh, original M1 and even pre-M1 memorabilia, um, but I couldn't uh, reply to the Facebook thread because I, I don't think I was friends with wherever it was posting. Um, so this is for you guys. Um, let's start with this. I I'm going to show you a couple of pieces of memorabilia, and I don't really want to part with any of these because they're like baby photos, but, uh, you know, most of these we still have the original computer files, um, so we could, you know, print more or, you know, make reproductions that are, you know, pretty authentic, pretty distinguishable. <coughs> Start with this. This is the last uh, new unused MAGFest 1 t-shirt. It's a small. We had a hundred of these done. Um, and the problem is, is on the front here, we had a mascot. Oh, let me see here. I can't, I'm not good with this camera. That is Maggie, the MAGFest mascot. That's her little, and my cousin Christina drew that picture of um, there. And we've since lost that original file, so we have no way to reproduce that front. But I have something perfect we can put in its place. The back side we still have the files for. As you can see, it says MAGFest, the Mid-Atlantic Video Game Festival, September 27th to 29th, 2002, Holiday in Roanoke, Virginia. And we were going for, we wanted to kind of have a comic book theme because, of course, we didn't know that we knew something was up with Penny Arcade, but we didn't know about PAX officially for a few months uh, after M1. Um, but, you know, the idea was, well, wouldn't it be nice to have uh, mascots or characters for the show? Um, and we kind of went with this quasi-chrono trigger theme. There's kind of a robo character in the background. And the girl with the spiky hair is the hero heroine, the protagonist. And then the girl with the dark hair, she's the antagonist. We, um, that's Maggie, but we really never came up with names for the other two. Now, that could be a, you know, if that's something you guys want to, you know, bring back or something, that could be kind of cool. Anyways, um, so in place of the front of the shirt, and, and this is, I've worn it two or three times, so it's, you know, the, the last, it's not the last new shirt, but it, it remained unworn for about 10 years, um, and it's only been worn two or three times by me. We had a hundred of these done. I don't know how many are left. Um, I think we sold out at the show. We may have had a few left. I don't remember. Um, this would be perfect to go on the front is the M1 emblem up there in the, the, the little chest in the top right, the M1 emblem. These are the MAGFest 1 program books. These are my last two. We had about 400 of them done. I believe they cost us about a dollar a piece. Uh, and, of course, we had plenty left after the show. Of course, they trickled out eventually. This one is one of three that I saved and had autographed by kind of the four principal people involved in MAGFest. When we, and we had 15, about 15 staffers. Um, but kind of the principal people are myself and uh, my co-chair, Sean Ryder, uh, and Rafael Parada, who did the artwork on the back of the shirt and all of the design for this book. And Pernell Vaughn, you guys know Big Pern. He ran our game room with uh, Rez, helped him out a lot, and Malcolm and David. And maybe there were one or two volunteers. I can't remember their names. Um, um, but we had three of these signed. Uh, we donated one to charity for uh, Child's Play, the, the, you know, the, the charity, and went for a couple hundred. And we had one framed and given to the MAGFest archives. I, I hope that you guys will find somewhere nice to hang it where people can see it and also where it will be safe because that was kind of why I, I donated to you guys so, you know, people could see a, a piece of M1 M memorabilia. And you might want to get a better frame for it because, honestly, I, eh, that was a frame I got at the last minute. Uh, and then this one uh, is my personal M1 program book. It's got, you know, signatures of everybody in the back, Stephen Kennedy and, and Mustin and Dale and a, and a bunch of them. Uh, there's, there's Robert Aldrich. Hey, Rob. Uh, hey, Bob. Um, there's Mustin and, and, and so on and so forth. There's Freddie Rico, the drummer for the mini bosses, uh, and so on and so forth. And it's, it's actually have some of my personal notes in it from the weekend of the show. Uh, moving on and, and much the same, the MAGFest, I have my MAGFest 2 program book. Uh, and as you can see here, everybody kind of signed the cover of it and a little bit on the inside and, uh, so on and, and so forth. 
Um, and I have my MAGFest 2 badge somewhere. I can't find it. Um, I know it's in a box over there, but, right. Uh, moving on to badges. Um, my E3 Expo badges for the three years I went. Uh, the first year we went to E3 Expo, it's this one, 2002. We promoted MAGFest. We had some of the t-shirts with us. We didn't sell a single one, I don't think. But we were trying to save them for the show itself anyways. Um, so on and so forth. And... Uh, People ask about this a lot, my MAGFest 1 badge. Um, of course, there were about 275, 300 badges done, I think. They came in four colors. It was the same picture on all four. Uh, purple, let me get up close there. Purple uh, for staff. And it, yes, Joe Yaman, God Convention Chair. That was Sean Ryder's idea. Um, purple for staff. Uh, yellow for attendees. So there's, you know, probably about 250 of those. Uh, and then red and green for uh, dealers and guests. Um, and I can't, I don't, I don't, I, Lord knows if any of those are still around. Um, probably about 15 purple, 15 red, 15 green. And then the rest would have all been, you know, for like the 250, 260 attendees we had. Um, and um, well, there you go. Um, and then this badge number one. <laughs> Hooray for me! Yeah. Okay. These are pretty cool. Sean Ryder, I had forgotten these existed. Sean Ryder gave these to me about a year ago. About a year ago. These are, and these are these are real vintage. These are original MAGFest posters that we would hang at our booth when we went to uh, Otakon, to the Philly Classic, um, some of the shows in Roanoke, like uh, ShivaCon and Rising Stars they used to have over it in Salem, and so on and so forth. As far as I know, there's only three of these in existence, and I've got two of them. Sean Ryder has one. Uh, it's the same thing. It's just two different colors, right? There's that one. And let me kind of try and open this one up for you. They're laminated, of course. Um, and here's the interesting thing about these. Uh, guest speakers, tournaments, auctions, trading, dances, concerts, anime games, and the dates of the show. And once again, you notice we had Maggie, the mascot, on all of on everything because we were trying to do like a mascot thing. Um, and Maggie survived into year two and maybe year three, I think. But here's the interesting thing. I want you to look very closely at the website. I've mentioned this before that MAGFest, when we came up with the idea in 2001, it, it was going to be OmakeCon, uh, an anime convention with a, a heavy video game theme to it. And of course, we this these came out we had already made the decision to just turn it into a video game convention and not just do another anime convention. But we hadn't changed the website yet. This may be like the last shred of evidence from the real early, early period of MAGFest when it was still Omake Con, the, the anime convention, right? Omake is, is, is Japanese for um, prize or bonus or extra or gift or whatever, right? So there's those two. Um, and like I say, with all this stuff, uh, either Sean or Raph, uh, I think Raph, Raph did these too, and Raph still has the original computer files, so we could make the similes of these. Okay. And then the last thing, uh, this is my little personal favorite item. This is the original mock-up book. Raph flew all the way down from Connecticut and stayed at my place for a week, and he brought this with him, and this is the first piece of printed MAGFest material, you know, it was kind of when, when, the, when he came down from Connecticut and put this in my hands, there was kind of that, you know, holy crap, this is going to happen moment. This is actually really going to happen. Um, and this would have been maybe about six months before the show. So technically, maybe those posters had been done. But this was, you know, as you can see, it's, it's, it's got this kind of spiral, cheap spiral binding. because it was, And this is a one-of-a-kind item. This is the only one ever. Um, and, oh, look, it's... Well, hell, one of the pages is... Anyways, um, and as you can see, we even had a few of our sponsors in place, TurboZone Direct, you know, God rest their souls, uh, Red Octane. Um, some of this stuff actually made it into the final. The, the rules pretty much stayed the same. Um, we didn't have our guest list finalized, so I don't know if the guests are in here. Yeah, some of the guests are still blanked out in here, as you will see, right? Um, and we have notes that, uh, oh, look at that, we penciled in Bob's name at the last minute. That must have been right when Bob confirmed as a guest. How about that? Um, we canceled certain events. 
um, and still a lot of blank space in this thing. But this is kind of a one of, one of a kind. This is my kind of my personal little. It's late at night. My kind of personal little favorite item. Um, but once again, we have the files. We could probably make a facsimile of this. Um, and you'll see, I've, I've tried to get as many people who were at MAGFest 1 as possible to sign it. So this year uh, coming up, I'll try and get all of the lumberjacks to sign it for me. Um, that would be kind of cool. Anyways, um, that's pretty much all of the, the what Paul referred to as the M1 OG shit. And that's pretty much all of it that I have. Um, trying to think really hard. Well, I got that M2 badge somewhere, uh, but that's pretty much it. Um, you know, we could do another run of the t-shirts. You know, we put the M1 logo in place of the picture of the girl. That would look better anyways. That would have been a great idea to begin with. Um, whatever you guys want, you've got my email. Contact me. Um, the video is for, you know, specifically you guys, you know, Paul, Brendan, Dom, Eli, uh, and, uh, and anybody else who wants to watch this video, uh, you know, and also, you know, uh, thank you. Since I don't know if I've ever done this officially, and if I have, I don't do it enough. Uh, thank you uh, to you guys, Paul, Brandon, Dom, Eli, uh, Nick, Jack, Hachi, uh, Tim, Tom, Steph, Carla. Uh, who else? And there's someone in there. I'm just going to get mad because I forgot to, um, you know, thank someone, but then, you know. Anyways. You guys have a good night. It's late. I'm going to bed.